Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caroline and today I am going to tell you about something quite shocking I learned when I worked at the pharmacy. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, like this video, share the video, and you can also go follow me on my Instagram that's also called The Art of Being Ill. I'm educated a pharmacy technician. So this means that I worked at a pharmacy for three years before I went down with depression, found out I had ADD and blah, 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 and now work part-time at a school library. <laughs> but I did learn something really interesting when I worked at the pharmacy. Something that was, well, interesting, sure, but also a little bit scary, to be honest with you, uh, especially because I couldn't relate. At that time, I already had my Crohn's disease. Um, so I was quite shocked when I worked in the pharmacy, I saw a lot of people who really had absolutely no idea why they were taking their medicine. And I mean this for real. It was like people did not consider them having an illness their responsibility. And I found out that that's apparently a thing that people think that it's the doctor's responsibility, everyone else in the healthcare system you might meet, and also the pharmacist's um, responsibility. I would experience people coming in and picking up medicine and not knowing what they were taking medicine for. They would just say, I don't know. I just know that the doctor prescribe something for me and we, I would ask them well you know the doctor prescribed something for let's say uh, high blood pressure and they would be like maybe that could be how can you not know why the doctor is prescribing medicine to you I was so shocked I got that a lot a, a really common one as well is sometimes people would get two types of medicine for the same thing, for, for example, for high cholesterol, high blood pressure, Crohn's disease, asthma, whatever you have. And sometimes that is the case. Sometimes you do need more than one type of medicine for the same condition for it to work for you. Uh, it's very individual, so, so it doesn't have to not make sense. It might do make sense. But the thing is, sometimes people will come and say, well, I need my medicine for high cholesterol. And I would say, OK, I can see there are two types. Uh, do you need them both? And they wouldn't know they were taking two types. And I remember thinking, again, how can you not know? You must know. You, you have the package. You, you, have to under, you have to know how many pills you take for high cholesterol. And, but they didn't. And the problem with that is that when the patient doesn't know, I clearly don't know as a pharmacist, and then it's really hard to determine, well, is, is this an accident? By the doctor, has the doctor maybe told them that they want to try out a different type of uh, medicine for high cholesterol and therefore giving them a new prescription and maybe forgetting to delete the old one or something? I mean, like, it's, it's like, but they couldn't answer that. And these type of people, I would tell them, well, if you don't know if you're supposed to take two, I would recommend call your doctor and ask them. And I just know they didn't do that. It was mind-blowing to me how little people knew about what they were taking. People would come and say, I need the red pill. And I would be like, the red pill, uh, that, well, that can technically be all the medicine you have. And they couldn't tell me what it was for. And, and I can understand you can take so much medicine that it can be hard to keep track of, but you should at least know why you're taking it. What I also experienced was that people didn't take their medicine. Then they would, for example, take something for us, asthma that was like um, to prevent asthma attacks, but they would only take it when they had an asthma attack and then they would, they would you know, complain that it didn't work and it's like well that's because you're taking it to prevent it but if you don't take it every day it's not gonna and it's like do you even listen to what the doctor says to what the pharmacist says like it's just so mind-blowing to me how many people do not take their medicine the way they're supposed to as often as, the, as they're supposed to and how many get mad about it not working but blaming everyone else but themselves 
Another thing I really experienced a lot is people coming to pick up some medicine, maybe insulin, and then realizing there is no prescription for them on the server. And then getting really angry because the doctor hadn't made a prescription and the pharmacy hadn't told them the last time they picked up it was the last time on the prescription or whatever. They would always get mad and I would be like, well, do you have any left? Do you have any insulin left? And they would be like, no. And then it was all of a sudden my problem. Like you have the responsibility for me surviving and getting my insulin. Like, no, that's not my responsibility. That's not why I'm here and I can't make a prescription. And when I asked them, well, have you called the doctor? Like, have you actually talked to the doctor and asked for a new prescription? And they would say no, because they expected the doctor to handle that. And it's like, the doctor, do you have any idea how many patients a doctor have every single day? They can't go over all the files on their patients to see if anyone is lacking any medicine. You have to take charge and order the prescription. And I don't know where you are, but in Denmark, it is so high tech today that you can do all this online. You can literally online on an app on your phone, you can contact the doctor literally just by swiping on your prescription. I want a new one of these. And then it sends the message to the doctor. So it's not even, you don't even have to be on the phone. You don't even have to wait in line on the phone to get through to the doctor anymore. You can literally just do it on an app. And like I said, the worst part of this is that people blame the doctors, everyone else in the healthcare system and the pharmacy. It was my fault they didn't have a prescription. Some people wanted me to call the doctor and it's like, that's not my responsibility here, okay? There are a few people that have been excused that I have helped. For example, a lady whose husband was dying at home um, and there would come nurses multiple times a day and give him morphine. And these nurses had forgot to order a new prescription for this morphine that they were supposed to give him because the customer had to pick that up herself for her husband. I helped her, but that was because her husband was literally dying. The pharmacy was almost closing and the nurses had clearly not done their job. And she had a complete breakdown because her husband is dying. He's in pain. And like I took over and called an ER doctor and asked them to prescribe something. But that's a whole different situation. This, th that was a woman whose husband was literally dying in front of her eyes and she couldn't handle anymore. And that's a whole different situation. Another situation is you messed up and didn't order your medicine. And this is what I mean about taking responsibility for your medicine. I was, or for your illness in general, I was shocked how many people do not take any responsibility. They just sit down and expect everyone else to do it for them. I was shocked. And I understand that it can be hard to keep up. I do. I have multiple illnesses. I had know everything about keeping up with tests and medicine and appointments. And I know everything about it, but you have to take responsibility. You have to try and find a system, maybe mark the calendar. Okay. I have a hundred pills here. I take this and this many, let's say you take two a day. So I have for 50 days. So let me Two weeks before 50 days, I will sit a mark in the calendar so I know that I need a new prescription or whatever. Like you have to do something. And if it's too much for you, for whatever reason, sometimes, you know, if you're mentally ill, for example, or if you're elder or something like that, and it's just becomes too complicated for you and you can't really manage and have energy for it. And that's fair, but then you need to find someone to help you. Um, or, or, you know, there are so many apps you can get today that can help you with these things as well, but with remembering things like there are so much you can do, but you have to take charge. And if you can't in any kind of way, take charge, well, you have to get someone to do it for you, but you have to contact in Denmark, the authorities, so they can send nurses out to your home that will make sure that you have your medicine and that you take your medicine and so on. And, and you know, but, but you can't just sit back and expect everyone to make sure you have your medicine, to make sure you show up at appointments and you have to take some kind of charge. And I really don't understand why some people don't because it's your life that depends on you taking charge. And it's sad. And you know, I just said that I don't understand why some people don't do it. And that's not entirely true because you can't be so severely mentally ill 
that is not possible for you to take charge. That's often a part of being mentally ill that you just don't think rationally and you don't really react to it and you don't really have that instinct to survive. But in general, a lot of the people I met at the pharmacy who did not take charge of their illness and their medicine was not the ones with mental illness. It, it just wasn't. It was people with physical illnesses. And it shocked me because I've always done my best to keep up. Um, do I slip up sometimes? Do I have issues sometimes? Of course, like, like it's not all perfect, but I do what I can to prevent myself from getting more sick. And knowing what you take and you know, knowing what you take, why you take it, how much you take it, how often you take it, you know, when you have an appointment, when you need to get your test done, when, you know, everything, you know, you, you, you have to find a way to keep up because it's your life. And it shocked me how few people take charge when they get sick. They blame the whole world and they take no responsibility. And it's really, really sad and a bit scary. And I don't understand the mentality. But the take from this video is you have to take charge. You have to take responsibility. You have to understand what your illness is, why you're taking the medicine, what type of medicine, how much you take. You have to take charge. You have to take responsibility because yes, there are people in this world to help you, but in the end, it's your responsibility. If you want the help, you have to cooperate. You have to do what you're told to do and well, you want to survive, right? Take charge instead of just being mad at the world because it's not the world's fault that you got sick. You have to take charge. I know it's a huge burden to live with, but you're not doing yourself any favors by just tuning out and not taking any responsibility whatsoever for your illnesses. That's not going to make you more healthy. So that was today's video, just a little uh, kind of a rant about how shocking I find it, how little responsibility a lot of sick people take for their illnesses and a recommendation to take charge, take responsibility. It will make your life better that you are actually taking some responsibility for your illnesses and doing what you're supposed to do. It will help you in the end. But that was it for today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Turn on notifications, like the video, share the video, and you can go follow me on my Instagram that's also called The Art of Being Ill. And have a blessed rest of the day, and I'll see you next time right here on my channel, The Art of Being Ill. <laughs>